And topic number three is apparently there is a no deal between Paramount, Netflix, Top Gun, and Apple. Um, you know, Top Gun Maverick is a sequel to Top Gun. And uh, let me just go ahead and read the report for you guys real quick. I got this from Cinema Blend. It says, why Tom Cruise's Top Gun Maverick isn't being sent to streaming? This is being written by Sarah L. Mahoud. Ma well, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I'm sorry, ma'am. Within the past year, the lines have started to blur in terms of what counts as a theatrical release versus a streaming movie. Over the Christmas holiday, Warner Brothers made Wonder Woman 1984 simultaneously both resulting in pretty dismal theatrical earnings by normal standards and spiked subscriptions for HBO Max. So what does that mean? Or more blockbusters going to follow this model? Warner Brothers is opting to release all 17 of the movies in 2021 slate in this fashion. But don't expect every big budget movies to fall in line and follow its footsteps, especially uh, Paramount's Top Gun Maverick, which sees Tom Cruise stepping back into the cockpit. Universal is sticking to its relationship. Oh, I, I suppose I skipped that part. A source told Wall Street Journal that both <laughs> streaming services inquired about distributing the film for the studio instead of Top Gun sequel possibly making the decision to delay its release again. But Paramount Pictures is determined to bring the movie to theaters. The sequel starring Tom Cruise cost over $150 million to produce and under certain circ circumstances pre-COVID, it has the makings of being a $1 billion hit. Larry, 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 what do you think about this right here, man? Um, are you excited for Top Gun Maverick, the sequel? Um, I am excited for it. I've been waiting for this. I mean, I, you know, my brother lives out in uh, out in San Diego and they did some filming out there, apparently. But he lives he lives not far from Miramar, which is the Top Gun school and sees those. When I go out to visit, you see the flood, the planes fly. I mean, they're these dudes are insane. They fly so low. You could read their tail wings. It's just. All it's right. fun when you see it. I've always liked it. I liked, I love the Top Gun, the original movie. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm a little sad that they, I'm a little sad that they rejected these offers. And I think that the producers are going to eventually regret it. And I think they're going to have to come back with a hat in hand and, and offer to sell this movie. And they're probably not going to get as much as they would if they sold it right now. And yeah. I think part of that is because I know that everybody's thinking, oh, OK, the vaccine's rolling out. We're going to get back to normal soon. The theaters are going to be back open. And I don't think that's going to be the case. I honestly believe that, um, you know, first of all, we know that the vaccines are rolling out way slower than right. than they should have than we than they were told they were going to roll out. So they're rolling out much slower. And on top of that. You know, I just I, I read something today saying that that one of the lawmakers up on Capitol Hill got his second dose of the vaccine or she I can't remember was it he or she, but they got a second dose of the vaccine and they ended up getting sick with COVID. So as they say, you know, they as they've said, it doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. The vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. It, what it does is it prevents you from getting deathly sick from it. So people can still get it. And some people may still get deathly sick because remember right. when they talk about the efficacy rate it still means that you know for some of them you're talking about like johnson and johnson at like 80 some percent the other ones are 90 something percent so that means you could still fall within that 15 percent or that or that 10 percent or that five percent and get sick what that means is there's going to be a lot of people out there afraid to go to the theater still right and, right and so if you just don't have people going to the theaters you're not going to have those big billion dollar you know, uh, box office, you know, receipts that are coming in. And I think that these, I think the studios just need to come to grips with that. They need to come to terms with it and figure out a new way that they can make that kind of money, you know, right. while still doing, with just doing streaming. And I think that, I think eventually all these movies that are being pushed back, whether it's the, whether it's, it's, it's Top Gun or uh, whether it's uh Black Widow or you know or bond i think they're all coming to streaming during 2021 they just may not they just haven't come to terms with it yet right on and uh, we got a super chat so i gotta do this real quick what a money reside what a money reside what a money reside what a money reside okay oh, before you <laughs> <laughs> all right so thank you very much ahmed ali 
Uh, oh, he back in uh, Harry Potter land. Voldemort prequel, uh, Harry's dad prequel or remake. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Guys, and before we move on, let me go ahead and introduce my second guest to the show. A really good friend of mine, cool, cool brother, coming from the windy city of Chicago. Uh -oh. he, does, he does movie reviews. He does trailer reactions. He does TV recaps. He also talks about entertainment news. You can also catch him interviewing one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. And if there is any man in the world right now that is trying to get the Black Panther franchise saved in the MCU to get T'Challa recast, it is this man right here. <laughs> Let me go ahead and introduce you guys to him right now. That is Mr. E-Man with E-Man's Movie Reviews. How are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? What's up, man? Hey, What's up? What's up? you right. Hashtag recast to Charles, yes. you know, and, uh, and the fight is not over. I've got some not. big things cooking, yes. big things cooking for that. Just, just want to put that out there. Right on, right on, right on, <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Welcome, welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the show. I'm All glad right. you're here. Thanks for being here, man. And we're just on the, uh, we're just on the third topic for tonight right now. Just talking about uh, Top Gun Maverick. And how Netflix and Apple had, you know, they they was like, hey man, we want a deal, but they they was like, no, no deal. You know, we want this to go to streaming. And uh, I was just showing him the report that I got from Cinema Blend. How how do you feel about this right here, uh, E Man, with uh, with uh, Top Gun I mean, Maverick not going to streaming? Look, I mean, look, I, I've I've said this time and time again. There's too much money to be made in theaters, way too much. Mm -hmm. And um, the return, I would say the financial return for these movie studios to drop things on streaming just does not compare because you're talking about, hey, let's take this blockbuster movie and I either can get five, maybe $700 million in box office or I might get a couple million subscribers and maybe I'll make like a hundred million, 200 million with those subscribers who, by the way, subscribers are fickle. If you don't keep up with that content, they could leave for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. guarantee, well, you know, if you got a big blockbuster, you have a higher opportunity to make more money in the theater. So I think with all the news of the vaccine, and I've said this before, too, with the new administration in place, um, I think you, you're going to see studios and theaters have more confidence to try and open up, maybe even prematurely. Um, and they're going to push these things to push them, you know, into theaters. And right, I think right. Top Gun is going to be right up there with them. Here's why I have to disagree with you on this, E man, because I think that with these new variants out and these new they're, and they're saying that the vaccines are not as effective with these new variants, and the new variants are far more transmittable transmittable than the other than the other current variants, we're gonna see more people get sick. And some of these variants but they're saying are you know that the vaccine is not as effective against them. So we're gonna see more people get sick faster. And the vaccines aren't going to be as effective, which means they're going to have probably some more closures. I would not be at all surprised if come summertime or come spring when people start getting when it starts to get hot again and people want to get out there and do stuff and be around other people. I would not be at all surprised if we see another big explosion of COVID come out again. Not that we haven't seen them and we're not still at ridiculous rates now. Right. But I think what's going to happen is you're going to have these theaters either shut down or never open back up. And you have companies like like let's I mean, when you talk about the stock market crap, when you have stuff like Reddit, you know, the Wall Street's best they're they're in a sense helping save AMC. But AMC says they have funding right now. And unless they use that big influx of, of, of interest and capital that's coming in with their stock price, unless they use that to secure other financial financing deals. They have enough money to get to the summer. They said they, the CEO said they have enough money to, to last until about July. Mm -hmm. Those theaters are not going to be open in July as at our current rate, which means they're probably looking at bankruptcy by the end of 2021, which means 2022, when the theaters possibly could open, we're going to have what the, the second largest theater, you know, theater company in the, going out of business. Oh, I'll give you two things. Uh, so I'll disagree with your disagreement only to a degree because I do think you have a you have a good point. No, it's a good point. I mean, like, you know, the virus is 
mutating. And these are things that, you know, you have to deal with whenever you're uh, encountering a novel virus. This isn't the flu. This isn't something we've dealt with with hundreds of years of experience or whatever. Um, it's a year old, if that, you know, in terms of our experience with it. But the, I think the biggest difference that you're going to have is the fact that, again, with a new administration, you have new uh, authority figures that are respecting science um, you have more <laughs> communication, more clear right. communication, um, not downplaying the severity of this. I mean, I literally just saw, I, I don't know if it was the CDC, so don't quote me, but they were sitting here talking about like, yo, now you might need two masks instead of one, or at least Damn. one who is more effective than the first one. So all I'm saying is I'm not saying that like things won't happen, but I do think that we're in a better position to deal with it compared to the uh, beginning of the pandemic. Um, I mean, theaters are think, open now. Do you now. think that's going to help or hurt? Do you think that's going to that extra that honesty and that extra information is going to help or hurt the theaters? Because honestly, I think that if if we had that to begin with, where people were being honest and telling us what was what, mm -hmm. the theaters would not be open at all a lot of the stuff that had been open would not be open at all. And I think what is happening with the Biden, you know, the Biden administration and with the CDC and the task force and the, and the COVID task force coming out, giving us more science-based information, what's going to happen is a lot of the stuff that's currently open is probably going to get shut down or the stuff that's not open is not going to open up anytime soon because they're going to realize the risk is just way too high. So I'm glad you mentioned risk. I think the reason why that won't happen is because unlike before, we actually have real guidance um, and standards. So, for <laughs> example, you can't just open just because the former president says we need to open. No, now you can only open with strict guidelines. So just because, for example, theaters are open now, they can only do, what, 25 percent capacity, you know, and like it's not until your local area reaches a certain, you know, tier that you're able to even open up and expand more. So I think that now that we have, which is what we've been lacking, rather than just saying, hey, states, go figure it out, do whatever you want. Now that we have like top level guidance in terms of how to deal with the pandemic in a responsible manner, I don't think you're going to have the erratic closures and things. I don't think you're going to see a repeat of what happened before. Basically, I think now we have some guidance, we got some structure, we have some leadership, um, and it's going to make a little bit more positive stride towards going back to a new normal. And I do think now theaters do need to change things up. I will give you that because right now, going into the summer, it ain't looking too hot. You know, and they might need a couple bailouts, you know, for, I don't know where they go get the money from. I didn't know where they got that 900 million something dollars from to begin with. That, I mean, uh, gonna, that, yeah, that threw gonna, me yeah. off. We're gonna get they were confident about it. And I don't know if that means they're going to sell off some assets. Um, let's not forget, if I'm not mistaken, AMC owns um, the AMC network. You know, Walking Dead and all that other stuff. Like that's all one big thing. So they have other assets they can play around with and do things to survive. Um, and you know, we'll just have to see if they are savvy enough to keep on surviving. Already, already. Well, um, I think that you know, all we can do and say is we gonna we have to wait and see. And everybody, please wear your mask over your mouth and your nose. Okay? All three of them. Yes, all three of them. Let's let's I get think out day of and day has been coming a long time, man. It's just it the the pandemic has has forced it here earlier than 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 studios wanted it to. And I think now that it's here, it's not going away. I think now that people are getting streaming, getting the blockbusters on on the same day, uh, you know, I just don't think it's going away. I think what's gonna happen is is you're gonna start we're gonna start to see our streaming services tiered. Whereas before you get Netflix. And Netflix is already tiered a little bit because you can get regular HD or you can get ultra HD. But I think we're just going to see it tiered where we're going to have Disney Plus and then we're going to have Disney Plus Premium with all of the first run movies. We're going to see Netflix and Netflix Premium with all the first run movies. And the same thing with with HBO Max and all the other. they're just going to they're just going to separate it out a little bit. So you have to pay an extra 10 bucks or 20 bucks a month to get all of those movies. And so I mean, if okay. they do that, if they do that, we've already seen examples of that, right? If they end up doing that thing where it's like, hey, we're just going to play things at the same time. 
we've already seen theaters flex their muscles and be like, all right, cool, we'll boycott you. And we've seen studios bend over backwards and be like, all right, we'll do a revenue sharing platform. And if they do a revenue sharing model where it's like, hey, we're going to drop it at the same time and we're going to give theaters a cut, that right there is a way for them to keep on surviving. So all I'm saying is like, I'm not, I don't want to take the complete opposite view of what you're saying, because I do think there is some validity to it, but I'm going to take like more of the middle ground. They are going to struggle, but they will find ways to keep their head above water because that's kind of what they've been doing for the past couple of years. You know, like they have theaters have not been like smashing it, but they haven't been like going all the way under where they're non-existent or not necessary anymore. People still will go to theaters no different than why people still go to restaurants and pay more money just for the change of scenery. Everybody can cook at home, just like you could watch movies at home, but you still gonna wanna go for an event once in a blue moon. So I do think the streaming model is going to change um, the theater experience where more of the blockbusters are gonna stay in theaters and more like the you know smaller, maybe not as spectacular movies will be better suited for streaming. So I think here's, that's here's the Here's where I disagree with you on that, E-Man, because the the, well, the the analogy you get you give about going to a restaurant versus staying at home to watch a movie, going to a restaurant is a convenience. It allows you to go out and not have to do the work. It allows so you to go delivery. out and have a good meal without- you get delivery at home? Whereas, whereas if you stay in to watch a movie, it means you get to enjoy the same entertainment that you are gonna see in the theaters Without ever having to leave your house, so you get that convenience at the home. Same. Time the same. out. The same. You got like oh. a two hundred foot screen oh, in your house. You got. I can tell you, got you right now. You got an IMAX screen in your house? No, but I do have a seventy inch TV in my house with a nice sound system, so I can tell you right now that when it comes, IMAX. Right, but when it comes to <laughs> IMAX, no, but when it comes down to watching <laughs> most movies, when it comes down to watching most movies, yeah. I would rather watch those movies. Now, there are some exceptions. Don't mind you. There are I, some exceptions. Yeah, I agree like, with you. See, that's what the thing. I agree with you on that. I think most movies are perfect for at home, you know, but like the big King Kong the versus can't Godzilla. Live, the I need that. They can't the live on those big movies alone, though. They uh -huh. can't live on those big movies alone. They need the other ones. And the studios are always going to sell them packages like, oh, you want, you want these big movies? Cool. You got to take our bundle of little crappy movies, too. You know? I yeah, mean, let's yeah, be yeah, real. Yeah. Comedies. Most yeah. comedies should never be in the theaters. Not agree. because they don't deserve to no, be watched, I agree. but I because agree. they don't need to be on a 100-inch screen or a 200-foot screen. Some I dramas, agree. Some, I agree. Some I dramas agree. don't need to be on there, too. I agree. Right. I, I agree. I, I, yeah. I yeah. agree. You know, and, I, and I love comedies, but the reality of it is they just don't need to be there. But this is so, what I'm um, talking about. There has to be a compromise, right? Like, if you've got the big action blockbusters, those are probably going to go into theaters because even if the comedies and the dramas, love stories or whatever showed up in the theaters, they might not get any run. Nobody's going to go see them because they want to go see Godzilla versus Kong or whatever. They want to go see Mortal Kombat on the big screen. You know, like, there's going to, there's going to be a place for the big blockbusters because that's what has always dominated theaters anyway. You see people like Scorsese complaining about Avengers and you know Marvel or whatever because the Irishman ain't nobody trying to watch that three hour movie, you know, in, in the theaters. Right, right, right. Which is right not. On. I watch it at home, but I don't want to watch it in the theaters. Right. So right that's on, right perfect on. for streaming, but there is already a place for Avatar 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Fast and the Furious, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, going into space and end the time. That that's for the theaters to dominate. But I, you know, I agree. Well, I agree, but well, I just I think the problem is is that moving forward with COVID and with all these variants, I don't see anybody going to the theater and then like the I'll be honest, I don't see I don't see people going back to the theaters. For the next two years, because oh, for years, well, 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 let me tell I, you why. I, 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 oh wow! I disagree. I give you a couple months. I give you a couple months. Let me tell you why. No, yeah. we, we, we do got to yeah. move on. We do got to okay, move but on. Let me tell you why I think it's two years. One, because it's going to take at least all of 2021 to get people vaccinated so they can really open up and make people feel comfortable, make people vaccinated and somewhat safe. Sure. It's going to take another full year for people to feel comfortable going back, and. During those two years, you're you have the streaming services out there buying properties, 
and they're and they're getting people more and more comfortable with watching first run movies at home. And even if they even if they tier their services, they're gonna get people used to paying for that. And people are gonna be like, why do I want to go to the theater when I can just watch it at home? Brandon, I know you want to move on, but I just want to ask one question. I just want to ask one question. What is gonna happen? Because this is a common trend. You always have you always have to pay attention to human behavior. What is gonna happen if a lot of these big movies that are dropping in 2021 suck? And I'm talking about the ones on streaming. One people one. will be glad they the didn't pay twenty dollars to go see it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. People I'm just be, saying. They'll be like, no, God, all, I'm glad this was all on I'm streaming. saying. All I'm saying is. When these streaming movies suck, it will depreciate the extra value you think you're getting by just staying at home. That's all I'm saying. It might taint it. Now, it, the I, thing say, is, I was glad that I did not pay because I would have had to have gone. If I went to the movies, I would have had to pay for my niece, for myself, for my wife. Go anyway. for my, uh, uh, he wasn't going to go anyway. Well, hey, well, I'm 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 I would have been hot. I'm he end wasn't going to go pay anyway, but I had I had to respond to something you said earlier, Larry. Two years, I think it'll take two years for the majority of people to, uh, to you know, 75, 85% theater for full capacity. But now, as soon as theaters open up, you're still going to have a nice, large flux of people that just run to the theater. I mean, uh, we're we're full, but... right now, because America's Americans are, are selfish and full of okay. crap. If we opened up our local bar down the street, there would be people up there drinking and passing right. COVID around. Well, let, let's go ahead and move on. I, I hear you, my brother, and good points <laughs> on all ends. I hate to cut y'all off because I'm having fun. 